filibuster of the local governor. To discuss these events, we're joined by Maram Bashara, senior political analyst at Al Jazeera and host and editor of the TV show Empire, and MIT professor Noam Chomsky, author of, well, more than 100 books, including most recently Gaza in Crisis, Reflections on Israel's War Against the Palestinians, also Hopes and Prospects, both published by Haymarket Books. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Wonderful to have you both in our studio this week on this 15th anniversary week of Democracy Now! Now, um, just a correction, it was an ABC News reporter, Miguel Marquez, not NBC, who was among those, you know, yes, know you know, Miguel? Miguel? Yes. He was in Manama, in Bahrain, um, part of this rolling rebellion in the Middle East. Um, Noam, uh, talk about the significance. I feel like we talked a revolution ago. <laughs> we were speaking uh, just as the rebellion was uh, unfolding in Egypt. But, and that was just, what, 18 days ago? 18 days ago, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a startling event. I mean, the, uh, uh, I don't think one can predict where it's going, but it's obviously uh, uh, creating at least the basis for uh, major changes in the region. And uh, uh, for the moment, the regimes are more or less holding. Uh, so in Tunisia and Egypt, it's essentially the same regime, the changes, but the public protests are so uh, uh, vibrant and uh, energetic that uh, it's hard to believe they're going to be, be able to hold. Uh, Bahrain, which you just talked about, is a particularly sensitive place. Uh, as you mentioned, it hosts the U.S. Fifth Fleet, the major fleet in the region, uh, but also it's a, it's a majority Shiite country with a Sunni leadership. and. Right across the, on the mainland, the population in Saudi Arabia uh, is also mainly Shiite, and Saudi Arabia has been concerned about them for years. It's a repressed population. Uh, they're concerned about possible influences from the Shiite regions nearby, uh, Iran, southern Iraq, and also that happens to be where most of uh, Saudi Arabian oil is. So it's a very sensitive area. You've been studying the Middle East, also traveling there for decades. Marwan Bashara, you live there. Um, uh, I think you don't live in any one place, uh, yes. but for Al Jazeera, you travel the world. Um, talk about the significance of this. Um, well, I think we are living, uh, I'm not sure if it's a 1989 moment or, or something else, but certainly uh, the Arab world has been uh, quite delayed from those transformations that took place in, the, in, in Eastern Europe or, for that matter, in Latin America. And I think perhaps uh, the Arab moment has come. It's clear that the genie is out of the bottle. Now, some people, some cynics, would like to see it as a temporary uprising and everything will go back as it were. I don't think so. I think change is coming to the, uh, to the Middle East, to the Arab world in general. And in a sense, uh, we know that the, the way back is not the way forward. But what is the way forward exactly? As Professor Shomsky said, we're not exactly sure. But certainly, it's a work in progress. And I'm not as skeptical as many that, uh, that uh, although bin Ali has gone in Tunisia and although Mubarak has gone in Egypt, that the Mubarak regime and the, Mubar and the bin Ali regime is going to stay. I think it's a work in progress. And I think sooner rather than later, we will see also the regimes being swept away after their symbols, their faces, have already, been, have already left the scenes. Well, I'd like to ask you particularly about Saudi Arabia, the bastion of, of conservatism and, yes. uh, uh, and authoritarianism in the region. Now Saudi Arabia is faced with Bahrain, uh, explosion in Bahrain to its east, Yemen to its south, uh, Egypt to its west, and, and basically all the countries around Saudi Arabia now are on fire, and the, the impact on the monarchy and, of course, on U.S. interests uh, in the area. Uh, what do you think will be the impact within Saudi Arabia itself? I think the impact is going to differ from one country to another, but there's certain commonality to all of it. See, there is this thing that's been absent in the mind of many, not only in Washington, but also in the U.S. media. There is something called an Arab. There is an Arab nation. You can fly, you can take a seven-hour flight from Morocco to Iraq, passing through an Arab region that speaks the same language, that has the same heritage, but it has been invisible to American media and to American decision makers. We've seen the Arab world, we've seen Saudi Arabia. We've seen Bahrain through the lenses of military strategy, oil, 
prisms of Israel, and certainly terrorism and jihad. But what we've seen over the last six weeks has been completely absent, and hence, it caught everyone by surprise. Everyone was caught in the headlights. What is going on? Who are these people? Don't, not realizing that in places like Bahrain, places like Yemen, certainly Egypt, Tunisia, and so on and so forth, a pent-up tension has been building up for years. This, this is not a new thing that's going on on Facebook. So in Saudi Arabia, like in the rest of the Arab world, we're going to see what has been building up for years. In Bahrain, they used to call it, for the last 30 years, attempts to topple the governments, attempts to topple the regime. In fact, they were community organizers. Well, they're not exactly like Chicago. The risks are far higher in, in, in the Arab world. But these are community organizers in Egypt, in Tunisia, Yemen, Bahrain, and other places, trying to live or trying to root for, 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 for decent living, but always being called terrorists or always been, uh, been oppressed under the pretext of terrorism. Marwan Bashari, you just came back from Washington, D.C., where you were meeting with think tanks. Um, what is your sense of the Washington consensus understanding versus what you are experiencing in the Middle East? You know, sometimes I forget exactly what are the concepts that are, are allowed on television or not, but let me just put it this way. They were caught with their pants down completely. I mean, people in Washington, until today, have not realized exactly what is going on. They're still trying to play catch-up with what's going on in the Arab world. So, I, for example, I was in one of those, uh, in one of those uh, brainstorming sessions that we tried to talk about what's next for Palestine and Israel. And what's, what amazes me is that ev everything that they speak about has an Israel reference to it. Because that's where the correspondence for their main networks are. That's where their people are. And that's how they've seen uh, the region, Egypt, Palestine, and so on, from Israel's prisms. So every point of reference is, what did Netanyahu say? Uh, what does Israel think? Uh, what would the Israeli lobby consider? Would now, for example, President Obama do this and that? And will the Israeli lobby allow him? What does that mean for our strategic interests? I mean, it's not understanding that there is a complete sweep that, that requires not only a change of mindset, and if you allow me here, a change of decision makers, perhaps, or you know, a change of aides in Washington. There's a complete class of bureaucrats in Washington that are not only not in touch with what's going on in America, they're certainly not in touch with what's going on in the Arab world. Well, uh, no, Chomsky, I'd like to follow up on that. The, the Times had an interesting article today, apparently an Obama administration leak, uh, that the administration had, uh, uh, for the president for more than a year, had, uh, had requested this study that predicted the possible outbreak of uh, popular movements throughout, uh, throughout the region. Samantha Power was involved in, in preparing this report, as if to say, well, we were on top of the situation, even though we weren't. Uh, we knew that this was coming. Uh, and uh, your sense of to what degree uh, Washington is, uh, is uh, able to respond or even is really aware of what's going on in the region? It's hard to believe that they're not aware of it. I mean, you can read it in the newspapers. There have been, uh, uh, there have been demonstrations and protests going on for years. A big protests in 2005. You know, they keep being repressed, and there are more. Uh, uh, in fact, the uh, you know the current wave of protests actually began last November in Western Sahara, um, Morocco, which is under Moroccan rule after a brutal invasion and occupation. Uh, the Moroccan forces came in, uh, uh, carried out, you know, destroyed the. Uh, tent cities, a uh, lot of killed, wounded, and so on, and uh, then it spread. That uh, you have to be pretty. Uh, Western also, Sahara is hardly known about the rebellion hardly known there, about, the but occupation. That's, there. I mean, it's a major uh, atrocity. It's kind of like East Timor, in fact, uh, pretty much the same, even the same time. Uh, the, uh, uh, but it's blowing up, and uh, uh, also they they must read the studies of Arab public opinion. I mean. You can't imagine an intelligence service that doesn't read the regular studies by Western polling agencies of Arab public opinion. And if you look at them, you can see why democracy is so is such a you know, such a frightening concept. Um, the latest major study last August, released by the Brookings Institute, so not very obscure, uh, showed that. Uh, Almost nobody in the Arab world regards Iran as a threat, 10 percent. 
uh, what they regard as a threat is the United States and Israel, like, you know, 80, 90 percent. In fact, a majority even uh, favor Iran having nuclear weapons to balance uh, U.S.-Israeli uh, uh, power, which is the real threat in the Arab world. Uh, you take a look at uh, 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 when they list people who are respected, uh, um, Erdogan, Turkey is way up on top. Uh, Obama isn't even listed. You know, you, you get down to Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, uh, no Obama. You know, now these are the opinions of people in the Arab world. Uh, what you said about the uh, uh, bureaucrats and the aides is absolutely correct. I mean, after all, there have been uh, 60 years in which explicit policy, you know, in, in writing has been internal records, has been to disregard the Arab population as long as they can be kept under control. So is perhaps the the uh, the reticence of the administration, uh, in case of Egypt, let's say, or, or, or right now in Bahrain, more geared to the fact that they know that public opinion and they understand that the, a real democracy in the region would mean another Latin America, another region totally out of uh, uh, U.S. ability to dominate? I don't talk to anybody in Washington, so I can only <laughs> guess. But it, it is simply inconceivable that at least the intelligence services don't go as far as reading polls that I can read. Um. Mm -hmm.